Hey sixth grade, before we jump into lesson 2.2, compare rational numbers on a number line, um, I'm going to go on ahead and give you guys your usual reminders. I pinky promise that at some point I will stop reminding you as frequently, you know, about what you need to be prepared for class. I just still want to make sure everyone is in a solid routine because I know that this school year is just a lot. So for now, go on ahead and click on pause so you can make sure you have your math binder and a pencil. You'll turn to the next blank page in your notes so you're ready to go. Also, while you're watching the video, remember to press pause and rewind anytime you need to catch up in your notes. You can watch the videos as many times as you need to and nobody will ever know. So for today's lesson, our lesson title is 2.2, Compare Rational Numbers on a Number Line. And you need to make sure you get your learning objective in your notes. And our learning objective is, I will compare rational numbers using a number line. I will compare rational numbers using a number line. Now, for some of y'all, the best part of this lesson is that it actually has zero, no vocabulary words. So it's time to move on to the textbook pages that you have in your math binder. Flip to page 37, and when we get done with the lesson, you must remember to go log on to HMH so you can complete check your understanding, compare rational numbers on a number line. Um, guys, make sure that you are watching this video first which if you've gotten this far, you're watching the video first. Um, but make sure you get this done before you do check understanding because it's going to be pretty easy to see who hasn't watched the video and who has when I see the grades on those. So make sure you're doing the video first. Okay, so here we have page 37 from our textbook. Compare rational numbers on a number line. And for our learning goal, it says, I can compare positive and negative rational numbers using a number line. Step it out. You can compare fractions by graphing them on a number line. And number one here says, Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Jones each have 30 students in their class. If Mrs. Smith corrected three-fourths of last week's math assignments and Mr. Jones corrected five-eighths of last week's science assignments, which teacher corrected the greater portion of the assignments? Question A is asking, what marks on a number line would you need to graph three-fourths and five-eighths? Um, I would like you guys to think about that for a second and pause the video and write your answer in the blank. What marks on a number line would you need to graph these two fractions? So for my answer for question A, I'm saying that 5 eighths has a denominator of 8, so I need marks that increase by eighths, which is what they already have down here on our number line. You've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to the next whole number. So for the question 5, it, or B, I'm sorry, it says graph the fractions on the number line. So if I needed to graph 5 eighths, or I'm sorry, three-fourths for Mrs. Smith, so that would be, well, three-fourths is also equal to how many eights? Eight divided by four equals two. Two times three is six. So that means I need to count over one, two, three, four, five, six eights. I'm going to put an S above that for Mrs. Smith. And then Mr. Jones corrected five-eighths. And since we already have our number line divided by eighths, I don't need to figure out, you know, I don't need to convert that to the same denominator, common denominator. So one, two, three, four, five. There's five eighths for Jones. Note the locations of the numbers. Three fourths is to the what blank of five eighths. Here's three fourths. 5 eighths is next to it, so 3 fourths is to the right of 5 eighths on the number line, so 3 fourths is greater than 5 eighths. 
Oh, or I guess I could have written the words in the blank, huh? Greater than. Write an inequality statement for question D. 3 fourths is greater than 5 eighths. So Mrs. Smith corrected less than or more than Mr. Jones. And way to go, Mrs. Smith, because you corrected more than Mr. Jones. Now question E, I want you to answer that on your own. Use the number line to help you write an inequality comparing negative 5 eighths and negative 3 fourths. Inequality is when you do the greater than or less than, and you need to write your own equality in the blanks. On the next page, when we turn it over to page 38, it says you can also compare decimals using a number line. Question 2. The record low temperatures for five cities are Ashton at negative 6 tenths degrees Fahrenheit, Bars at negative 1.7 degrees Fahrenheit, Carl at 7 tenths of a degree Fahrenheit, Davison at 4 tenths of a degree Fahrenheit, and Edgeville at negative 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Graph the temperatures on the number line and label each with the first letter of the city's name. So you need to pause the video and put all five of these different temperatures on the number line and you need to label it with the first letter of the city's name. So pause the video to take care of that. Okay, so I went on ahead and I put the record low temperatures on my number line and like the instructions said I labeled each temperature with oops I messed up though with the first letter of the city's name so note the locations for the numbers of bars in Edgeville so there's the B for bars and the E's for Edgeville negative 1.7 is to the left or right of negative 1.5 um, well, negative 1.7 is to the left of negative 1.5. So, bar's low temperature is colder or warmer than the low temperature for Edgeville. Well, I know that the farther to the left we go past zero, that the temperatures will get colder. And since bar's is just two notches to the left from Edgeville, I know that bar's low temperature is just a little bit colder than the low temperature for Edgeville. So then it says complete the inequality in two different ways. Negative 7 is greater than or less than negative 1.5. Ooh, that's tricky. Um, negative 1.7 is less than negative 1.5 because you're getting farther from zero. And then we have the opposite. Negative 1.5 is still greater than negative 1.7. Okay, now I want you to turn to page 40. Turn all the way over to page 40, which actually isn't that far. So number 5 says, on this map of Main Street, distances are in miles. The plotted points indicate the locations of landmarks. The library is plotted at point zero. Find the locations of the other landmarks and record them in the table in decimal form. So you need to figure out how the, sorry, you need to figure out what decimal place the different landmarks are and then record them over here in your table. So I would say here's the city park. It's negative... 25 negative or negative 0.25 negative 0.5 and just over a little bit I'm going to say the city park is negative 0.6 miles all right just to get you started now you finished the table on your own so here's my completed table you've got the city park at negative six tenths of a mile the courthouse is at negative 1.5 or negative one and a half miles the bookstore, though, is to the right of the decimal, or I'm sorry, to the right of zero, so that means it's going to be positive. So, and it's also one tick mark to the right of one, so I know that it will be 1.25 miles from the library. And then the museum is one, two, three tick marks from zero, so the museum is three-fourths or 
75 hundredths of a mile from the library. Question B, how do the locations of the city park and the library compare? Well, here's the city park. Here's the library. Write an absolute value inequality to compare the distances from point zero to these two buildings. So for B, when it says, how do the locations of the city park and library compare? I went on ahead and said that the park is to the left of the library. So to write that in an absolute value, you'd have negative, oh, I guess I was off on my 0.6 miles, but you have negative 0.52, negative 52 hundredths. The absolute value of that is greater than the absolute value of zero. How do, question C, how do the locations of the bookstore and courthouse compare? Well, let's see here. We've got the bookstore and the courthouse. And you could say the bookstore is to the right of the courthouse. And then we need to come up with an absolute value inequality to compare the distances from the point zero to the two buildings. So I wrote on my paper, um, book, the bookstore is to the right of the courthouse, and then you have the absolute value of 1 and 25 hundredths is less than the absolute value of negative 1 and 5 tenths, because 1 and 5 tenths miles is farther from 0 than 1 and 25 hundredths. On to question D. How do the locations of the museum and the bookstore compare? Write an absolute value inequality to compare the distances from point zero to the two buildings. All right, we've already done a couple of these together, so I would like you to complete D on your own. Okay, and now that you've done question D on your own, I want you to come down here to 6 through 11, and the instructions say use the number line to compare the rational numbers. So I'm going to I'm going to have you guys do this on your own. Yes, and make sure you include it in your pictures when you take your pictures of your notes. I'm going to go ahead though and do number 6 with you just, you know, as a just so you know what you're supposed to be doing. So if we have negative 1 and 3 fourths, and we're comparing it to negative 1 half. And we have 1 2 3 4 5 marks between each whole number and I know that I'm gonna to have to go to the left of zero because both of these are negative numbers so here's my negative one-half and then if I have to come down here for my one and three negative one and three-fourths my mark is gonna be somewhere in there give or take a smidge because as we all know I am not perfect so um Negative 1 and 3 fourths is greater than or less than negative 1 half. Negative 1 and 3 fourths is farther from 0 than negative 1 half. So that means that negative 1 and 3 fourths is less than negative 1 half. So I want you guys to do the same thing on your own with the other five inequalities on this page. And remember to show it in your notes when or yeah, in your notes when you take those pictures and submit them to Canvas. Also, I just am going to remind you one more time to make sure that you complete check your understanding as soon as you're done with this. That way the material is fresh in your mind and you'll be able to do your best on it. All right, I'll see you all later.